triple C. I'm gonna make them bend the knee. Rolling with the triple C. Don't really count the heat. Another episode of Believe You Me is with you. But look at this guy. This is not Harrington. This is not Brian. This is the one, the only, the triple C, the bantamweight champ, the flyweight champ, the Olympic gold medalist, the king of cringe, <laughs> Henry Zahudo. <laughs> Step aside, Bruce Buffer. What's going on, Henry? Yeah, that was good, Michael. That was good, baby. Jesus, man. Step aside, Bruce Buffer. Step aside, Bruce. I'm coming for you, bro. How you doing, Henry, man? Thanks well, for joining us today. You know what? Well, life is good, man. Life is good, Michael. As you as you know, you know, I got my little baby who's about to turn one. And then obviously I'm making my comeback. I'm officially, yeah. I'm officially, you know, eligible to compete again. And you know, it's just a bunch of uh, people are playing duck duck goose, Ooh. Michael Bisbee. You know, it's like uh duck duck goose, pretty much. So what is the definition of duck, duck, goose? I'm not familiar with this. It's like side, side, step. I don't know. What is it? What, what the fuck is duck, duck, goose? That's right, man. You English, you guys have different, uh, you guys have different games. But duck, duck, goose is, is a thing that you, uh, that you go around like, you know, when you're in school, like particularly like first grade or kindergarten, where you literally walk, go around a circle and you're able to like tap somebody's head. And then that person's supposed to chase you around and try to get you. But, so, but the person, but the person that's that's that picks the person that he wants to hit doesn't always. It, he always picks the slower person, so he's able to freaking co- go back to the circle where he's sitting at, so he's able to actually win. So, so in this situation, Aljamain Sterling is either a duck or a goose, and which one are you? Oh uh, well, he's the duck. I'm the goose. Oh, you know, he's, he's, he's going he, after that little quacky. Yeah. Oh, he's he's ducky, man. That's 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 what he's good at. So that's that's where I'm at. Not just him, but even Sean O'Malley. You know, because after I after I saw Aljamain Stalin trying to, uh, you know, <laughs> stall out the fight completely, I said, hey, I, I came up with the conclusions. Of, hey, why don't we do an intro belt with the Third Island boy, Sean O'Smelly? <laughs> and uh, he doesn't want the smoke either. You know, he oh, doesn't. He shit, wants Cheeto. Man. These guys, they don't want none, dude. They don't want nothing. They don't want none of the rest. They don't want none of these hands. So I don't know what to tell you, Michael. Well, well, we do have a lot to talk about so much. And I want to get your thoughts on the big fight card this weekend as well. But um, you know, the Bantamweight division right now is it's it's stacked. There's a lot of eyeballs on it. There's a lot of stars. Obviously, since you stepped away over a very impressive win over Dominic Cruz, the division, you know, there's O'Malley's a massive star now. Cheeto Vera is doing big things, of course. Aljamain Sterling's the champ. So you're, are you are still going through your six months you saw the testing process? Is that correct? No, 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 no. I'm officially, as of last month, I'm completely done with my six months. Like, I'm right. eligible to legitimately compete. And yeah, Michael, like, it is a tough division. But mm-hmm. I don't, I just don't see any of those guys, any, any of those guys competing with me at, at any level, including the champ, Al Jermaine. And And the same reason why he wants to wait out until June. Like a bunch of excuses, Cheeto Vera, easy fight, Sean O'Malley, easy fight. You know, it, it's the Bantamweight division. It, it, it is tough. It is the it is the most stacked division I believe in the UFC. But I kill them all, Michael. Well, that's what you got to think. And to be honest, to be honest, you do have a good chance. I mean, styles make fights, and with the wrestling that you have, and and not just the wrestling. I know you're a very very mentally strong person. We did that podcast. It's called My Fights, which is available on Audible, by the way. Cheeky little plug there, but me and Henry sit down for an hour. We have tons of other great fighters on there as well. We sit down for over an hour and we talk about your background and the adversity that you had to uh, go through to get where you are today. Um, obviously, you want to be a part of the biggest fight possible. So who are you talking about? Who is, is the UFC targeting, things like that? Uh, they want Algermain. They want Algerman. They want me to. Uh, they, they want me to pretty much take them out. I'm the hitman. You know, they're they're right. they're sending me in. To, you know, this this the Bantamweight division has got to move. You know what I mean? And if, if and if Algerman wants to take his uh, his nine months to start his rap career and and sip on that Hennessy, then that's on him. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to create fights to get the best fights out here, so the best of the best can actually fight. So that being said, you know the UFC they do want to champion that 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 can continue to keep fighting. You know, I go back and I talk about Mike when I was a champion in two divisions. In 10 months, I fought Demetrius Johnson, TJ Dillashaw, <clears throat> and Marlon Marais. In 10 months, uh, Bisping. You know, I had a surgery, so I, could, I couldn't I could almost compete for about a year. But, you know, and as, and as soon as I came out of surgery, my therapy was done. Within a few months, I was fighting again. 
So I'm a competitor. I'm a fighter. Uh, this is what the UFC wants. I think there's a lot of great matchups that they could do. You know, once I, once I won that belt, you know, we got Jan, we got we got uh, we got Sean. I mean, you know, I, I, at the end of the at the end of the day, like my goal, business, is to eventually go up and and solidify another belt. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're back, Henry, because you do bring a lot to the table. You're a phenomenal fighter. I, I don't need to say that. I don't need to sit here and kiss your ass. I was surprised, though, after you beat Dominic when you did retire. What was the choice and what was the reason for that? Um, it, honestly, it, it, it's it's what it was. You know, it was a retirement. I, when, you, when you've done everything, Michael, when you've, you know, especially when once I met out with millions of dollars after that last fight due to the pay-per-view points and what I got paid, I was just like, hey. <laughs> I'm riding out to the sunset, you know, got into real estate, bought a bunch of properties. I'm in the Airbnb. Nice. I'm in the Airbnb business now. I just finished up a whole duplex, which is worth tons of money. I'm starting up another one in the next, uh, in the next month. These and are all the, down in Arizona. These, these are all down in Arizona. So I well, bought bro, like, that's I, my accommodation. So if I'm ever coming down to Arizona, I've got a free Airbnb. <laughs> Fucking, that's very kind of you, Henry. Oh, why not, busy? Why not, man? You got it. And they're in the hood, but oh, you'll, shit. Have, you'll have a place to stay at. <laughs> they will be like, this bloody guy talks funny. What's he doing around there? Uh, no, but sorry, I interrupted you. So you were saying. No, so no, no it was it's like when, you, when you've literally accomplished and you've exceeded everything that you wanted to do, you know, like my number one goal was to be the best father, you know, in the world. And then my number two goal was to be Olympic champion and then UFC champion. I've been able to accomplish all that. And it's been the best thing that has ever happened to me, Bisbee, to really, literally like step away, see the sport from outside being in, just becoming a fan to, you know, uh, just growing, man. And I think when, and I, when you, and I've been doing this since I was 11 till now, it, it was a much needed break. And honestly, I, I'm coming back. I, I, what I see now, Bisbee, with all these guys, and I'm going to be quite frank and honest, is I know I'm gonna win the championship. I see dollar signs on these people, you know. Aljamain Sterling, I see. I see a Benjamin. I see, you know, a Sean O'Malley. I see a Benjamin. I see a Benjamin with all these dudes. Like I'm not just. I'm not, I'm motivated to stop people, to kill people, and uh, and to get paid for it. That's it. But I'm just a hit man. And so, obviously, I'm I'm not putting words in your mouth. But do you think because Aljamain has spoken quite publicly that he's gonna take nine months off and come back probably around next June? Um, he said because the, the five round camps are very strenuous and all the rest of it, and he needs to take a little break. Or you, the, say, the little princess needs a break, Bisbee. What's your take on that? He's healthy, he beat a dude with one shoulder. I mean, come yeah. on, dude. So, you're saying that he knows that the UFC are looking to match you guys up, so he's trying to squeeze out and hang on to that belt for as long as possible. Exactly, 100%. That's exactly what he's doing. He's a dirtbag, he's a clown that wants to take a break. And uh, he wants to celebrate. He wants to, you know, start his rap career, whatever the, the hell he wants to do. But I'm here to take him on. That's exactly what I'm going to do, Bisbee. Yeah. yeah well, well, that's what you have been doing. I mean, you've always brought a lot of excitement. Uh, let's just assume that Aljamain Sterling, for whatever reason, that fight doesn't transpire. Or, or do you have authority that that will be your first fight that you come back to? Um, that's the only fight that I'm thinking of. The other one that the, the other one that I want is the Volkanovski fight. If they want to, right now the UFC is protecting Alexander Volkanovski because they know that Islam's about to put an ass whooping on him. You know, so it's not it's not that it's not that Islam is stalling or 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 Volkanovski stalling. Is they're starting to see? And I've said it before. This dude is too big for this guy that has this one style that's going to overwhelm Volkanovski and completely take him out. Mm. The pound for pound king right now is about to get served up. So this is why, you know, the other idea that would be for me, and I'll be ready for February too, if they want to, if they want me, if if Al, if Al just shit stain is going to take those nine months, then give me Alexander the average. You know, why don't you give him to me, Bisbee? You know what I mean? Like I, I, I'm the guy that could sell a fight. I could I could be a tune up fight for him before he he gets up to a bigger wrestler. He can defend my wrestling. He can get up for me. Then maybe he could get up from Islam. But I just think that's just a great fight for uh, for both of us. You know, we're about the same height. I think my experience, my IQ. Obviously, he's pound for pound. I personally think Bisbee that I could take him out. I really do. Yeah, well, well, listen, I mean, you've proven that you can do that. You know, you've for anyone to deny you or underestimate you, that would be foolish. What are you weighing right now? Right now, um, I'm down at 155. 
155. Yeah, so 155 is not crazy. And no, how no, do you feel no. at 55? Are you? I, I, I feel good. I, I, feel I good. wouldn't take my shirt off right now. Let's put it that way. Would you take your shirt off? I'm not going to ask you to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Would you would you bounce around Vegas at a pool in summer like you're looking good? Or would you, oh, yeah. Would you keep yeah. a little tank top on to keep the fat covered? Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, a couple of months ago, I probably wouldn't, but now, yeah. <laughs> but now, yeah, oh, hell yeah, man. If anybody has a broken washer, dude, I'll wash them thongs on these freaking, on these abdomen oh. here, baby. There we go. Uh, obviously, if, for you to walk in and fight Volkanovski, that's going to upset a lot of people at 145. There's already Arnold no, Allen no, out there calling no, for an but, interim title. Yes, but when you have a dominant champion that's been dominant for so long and he's been putting away people, what's the what's the number six or seventh guy going to do to somebody like Alexander Volkanovski? I know somebody, the Olympic champ, youngest in history, to win, to win Olympic gold medal in 2008. The double champ in the UFC beat Demetri Johnson with the highest... Uh, uh, winning streak in UFC history, um, dude. It, it's a perfect matchup, man. But I just don't think. Uh, I just think if I have to win my belt back to eventually go after that and win that third belt, that, that then that's what I have to do, Bisbee. Yeah. But let me ask you, what's your take? What's your take on me and Volkanovski? I, I, like I mean, you, you, would you, or, you, or would you rather put Arnold, who nobody knows, who's number seventh or sixth? But you know well, what I'm well, that that is the problem for Arnold, isn't it? Arnold's a phenomenal fighter. He's a great guy. Works his ass off, but he's he's not very vocal on the microphone. And sadly, in this day and age, there is the entertainment aspect to it. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, I I think you should fight Aljamain Sterling. That should be the comeback fight. And if and when you be, if you be Aljamain, I've got to be respectful. You know what I mean. Uh, if you be Aljamain, then then you have an ability. Or maybe you fight, you defend it against Sean, and then. You're an established bantamweight champ, and then you get to fight him because he's going to fight Islam. He can't then come back to 145. I'm, I'm just looking at it from the UFC's perspective. If they were to allow their 45 champ to go up and then come down and fight a guy that had been retired for two years, it's kind of unfair to the division. Oh, uh, not really, man. Welcome to the UFC, dude. You know, if Conor, <laughs> if Conor McGregor can go out there and, and be some champ and they get a title shot, come on. All right. you know, if he has the ability, you know what I'm saying? Like, Michael, there's the, through my accolades, uh, I, I believe I deserve that respect too. You know, through, nope. not, not just not just in MMA, but in combat sports. And yeah. I think with that being said, man, I skipped the fucking line and I feel good about it. No, your resume is up there with the best of the best. And that, that's not that's not even a debate. That's just factual. It, it is. And I always say that, Henry. Um, I'm going to throw some names at you. Give me a quick fire response as to what would happen. What would you do? What do you think of them? Cheeto Vera. Punish him. Has no has has difficulty with the guys with lateral movements. I'd beat him up. Easy money. Sugar Sean O'Malley. Easy money. Princess, the third island boy. He absolutely sucks. I'd stop him within three rounds. Obviously, Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain shit stain Sterling, you know, aka flavor flav. He wouldn't make it past three rounds either. Defend his defend his takedowns. You know, beat him up with my hands and feet to eventually knock him out with the freaking head kick. And then, I mean, I'm not going to say Volkanovski, that's so obvious. Islam Makachev, swerve, swerve ball. Islam Makachev, what would happen? <laughs> He's the 155 champion. Yeah, talking that, about that fighting is. Volkanovski. Come on, give it to the Dagestanis. There's a, there's well, a little, there's a rivalry brewing right now between American wrestling and the Daggy standing wrestling. Yeah, Chandler yeah, well, came well, out this week and talked a bit of shit. Bo Nichols jumping on that bandwagon as well and saying, we need to show these Daggy standings that the Americans can wrestle better. No, 100%. But yeah, but the, the, and, and that's what we'll take it because 155 pounds, first I got to win the 45 to eventually go up yeah. and maybe even challenge any of these other guys. So I don't want, I don't want people to also think that I'm a wishful thinker either. No, you know? I know. That He's in his own category. But yeah, but that being said, American wrestling is better than Dagestani wrestling. When it comes to the sport of mixed martial arts, is because American style wrestling, it's the folk style wrestling, yeah. is where, when we're able to control. If you're to put Khabib with an NCAA champ or an NCAA wrestler, and you just have them work top bottom, with that, with them not knowing any of MMA, Khabib wouldn't get up. He wouldn't. A lot of these guys wouldn't get up. They just happen to keep going up against guys that don't have that division one kind of status. You know, the other one that I could think of was Justin Gaethje, but Justin Gaethje hasn't wrestled in probably a decade. I know. And he even said it. He's like, dude, once I was done on wrestling, that's one thing that I never wanted to do ever again was to wrestle because it just, it was hell. 
this these are the words that came out of his mouth because the sport is so fucking hard. The dude said, dude, I just did not want to go back. And I promised Ma that I will never wrestle again. <laughs> That's why I have so much respect for wrestlers. And it sounds because obviously I hated people when they were trying to wrestle me. But seeing my son now, he's a, uh, he's on a wrestling scholarship in San Francisco. The, the experience that I have wrestling as well, like all my main injuries came from wrestling. It really is the toughest element of all mixed martial arts. So, so yeah. All right, then. So time frame, when do you, when do you think or when are you eyeballing to be back in there? Um, uh, it all depends with the UFC. I'm ready. I, I could be ready in Australia for February. I could be ready, uh, you know, or March. Um, you know, is that I, a, I, I, have I, they reached out to Al Jermaine about this? Yeah, of course they've had. Of course that they they they, they want to they want that excitement, dude. It, it it it's you know TJ TJ. If, if, if I can understand if maybe he went through war with TJ, but it was uh, it was pretty much a buy. You know what I mean? And th that's not Al Jermaine's fault. But no. you could also be like, hey, maybe I'll take a month, party, party it up. You know, next month I get back on my diet and then I make a decision after two months. Mm -hmm. I think that would be fair, which which would put us in March. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, but this dude's literally, man, he's trying to start <laughs> his damn rap career. I mean, he's talking about. Is he really? I haven't heard about yeah, that one. I know yeah. about the, 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 the whiskey or the rum, or the rum, what he's trying to do. Uh, oh, he's trying to do a rap about, career as well. He's trying to do that, drinking up on the uh, drinking up all the Hennessy, dude. This dude is this, this dude has gone wild, Michael. Yeah, this dude yeah, don't want to. Yeah. This dude don't want to fight the Triple C, dude. When well, you keep talking enough shit, I think you're gonna make it happen. Um, <laughs> real quick before we move on to some other stuff, <laughs> TJ Dillashaw. Obviously, when you guys fought, he tested positive, right? Was that the EPO that one? Yeah, yeah, was that, yeah. Was that yes. against you? Yes, yes, that yeah, was against I, me. And and people don't know this. It was like, oh, it was the weight that he did a PO? Oh, he got. Oh, he got hurt because of the weight. Like, no, dude, he weighed in bigger and higher at a. He weighed in at 147 pounds when he made weight uh, at flyweight. I mean, this dude gained. What is it? Yeah, 22 uh, pounds. Yeah, 22 pounds at the wins when he fought at bantamweight. He went in at 143 pounds, I believe, which was only eight pounds after he made 140. Uh, after he made 135 pounds, when he did flyweight, he was up to 147. These are all public records too, if yeah. you guys want to look at it. So the dude was 100. percent I was just on a mission. I tapped yeah. that chin, hit him to the body, and I was relentless. I was like a dog on a bone. I knew I was going to finish him. What What do you think of TJ? Where he's at now? Do you think you know? Obviously, the shoulder kept popping out against Al Jermaine. What do you make of he does not he does that fight, but the whole circumstances surrounding it? He does he doesn't know how to train, Bisbing. He doesn't know how to train. If if you have if you've had that many surgeries, if you had that many surgeries and uh, and you're still training like an idiot, then that's that and that's what happens. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta be able to modify everything that you do so you can feel good. And, uh, you know, he, he, he doesn't know what he's doing, Michael. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, all right. But by the way, it's a very professional setup you've got there, Henry. What are you trying to do? Are you, trying to, are you challenging me for the YouTube, the yeah, best course. YouTube channel out of all the UFC fighters? God I gotta, damn you. I got to still, I got to still your followers. <laughs> I got to still your followers and Uncle Chels, but you guys remember to follow Triple C at my YouTube channel at Henry Cejudo. <laughs> 